Hello and welcome to BharatShakti.in. I am Nitin Gokhale. With me today on this special broadcast is Secretary of DRDO or Defence Research and Development Organisation, Dr. Satish Reddy, who will be talking to us, taking us through the various projects that DRDO has been doing and the progress it has made over the past one year or so. Thank you for your time, Dr. Reddy. Let's get to uh, your main job that uh, DRDO does for the armed forces. Uh, of late, uh, you have done several things uh, for the armed forces. Let's start with the bridging system, uh, for instance. What is that uh, that has been done? See, the bridging system has been developed by a laboratory called r and Engineers in Pune and te technology has been transferred to uh, L&T. Mm -hmm. And uh, wherever you have canals and other things or rivers and all that, you have varieties of bridges which have mm -hmm. been developed, mm -hmm. uh, which actually can be carried by a BMP vehicle. And then you can lay it there within a few minutes. Yeah. Actually, it is 5 meters, 10 meters, 20 meters, 45 meters, Correct. and even 75 meters. Right. Of bridges have been developed, mm. which are lighter in weight, but at the same time, they have a good uh, uh, load carrying capability. Mm. And uh, LNT has come up with uh, production capability. Recently, they have delivered uh, 12 numbers, wherein um, the chief of army staff and me. Uh, flagged off uh, these 12 go moving right. into armed forces mm. and the production started and so the armed forces have varieties of bridges based on the type of uh, uh, rivers and canals and have, requirements yeah. they have they can use it sure. and uh, armed forces uh, from that particular EME group it is one of the largest orders what they have placed mm -hmm, and right. uh, industry is also geared up. Yeah, in, indeed. In fact, uh, of course, uh, DRDO's uh, one of the big strengths has been about missiles and rockets. Pinaka, recently you uh, tested some uh, enhanced range uh, 122mm uh, Pinaka. How is that uh, test gone and what is it going to be uh, in terms of uh, productionization? Basically, the range of the Pinaka has been enhanced. Mm. The Pinaka racket has been there with the armed forces, which is being, uh, which was earlier being produced by uh, uh, Ardnas factories and then uh, industry like LNT and uh, Tata and the ground vehicles. Now, the range has been enhanced. The range can be about 45 plus kilometers and that has been tested in Balasore very recently. Now we have uh, roped in a private industry called Economic Explosives Limited mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, they have started producing this also. And so large numbers are going to come in and we'll be going soon for the user trials to give this enhanced range Pinaka. Okay. Then there is one more uh, thing which has been uh, brought in in Pinaka is we brought in a guided Pinaka. I see. Means, uh, okay. uh, which a uh, rocket which is a simple ballistic rocket has been made as a more like a ballistic missile. Missile. So mm -hmm. with uh, the range of the rocket has been increased mm -hmm. and uh, with the guidance kit, the accuracy of that also has been increased. This also has gone through the developmental trial. It will have navigation. Uh, uh, it has got a navigation, guidance, control and everything. And there is an intelligent uh, computer inside which works on it and control surfaces right. to take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the range is enhanced. The accuracy is much, much better. Right and uh, the development trials have been completed. Mm -hmm. Soon we should be going for the user trials and then uh, then it gets into the armed forces. Uh. But not just Indian armed forces, it's got huge export potential if I am not mistaken. It will be having a very huge export potential, a lot of inquiries are coming for that. Mm -hmm. And I am sure with the industries, multiple industries there in the picture, they should be able to uh, uh, supply it to the entire world. No? Yeah. What about the uh, the progress on the uh, eight attacks uh, artillery guns? Uh, what are the uh, testing? Where is it now? At what stage? Firstly, attacks is the pride of the country, and uh, in the 155 mm uh, caliber yeah. uh, guns, that is the world's longest, longest range, range gun, yes. yeah. and it is a different model for DRD to work. Right from the day one, the industries were involved. Mm -hmm. Both uh, Bharat Forge Limited and Tata Tata's. were involved. Mm -hmm. They were partners in the development. And so both the people have fielded their guns. The winter trials have been conducted successfully mm -hmm. in the winter at uh, very cold regions. And now the summer trials are just starting now. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, very hopeful that the um, trials will go successfully and the gun gets inducted into the armed forces now. Correct. It's uh, it's a matter of time. Uh, it's a matter it of comes. time. It's a right. matter of time. That's right. Then, of course, there the world over, there was a lot of curiosity about the Agni P. Uh, that got tested in uh, Balasore recently. What, what is it? It's a different family or it's the same Agni series? It's uh, uh, one of the Agni series uh, missiles with uh, 
many more technologies, a lot uh -huh. of optimization which has been brought in, a right. lot of new technologies have been incorporated and uh, try to miniaturize most of the things. Mm -hmm. And so I can say it's slightly a, a new generation in Agni series, mm -hmm. and which uh, as you know that we have conducted the trial recently, and right. which was very successful uh, mission, yeah. proving all these technologies what have been incorporated. And these are all uh, indigenous uh, technologies. Absolutely. Uh, they are all indigenous. Indian uh, innovators, industry, everybody. Absolutely. Industry is uh, fully geared up and um, we have uh, complete confidence in these systems. Let me make one statement here. <laughs> See, we are actually self-reliant today completely in missiles, radars, sonars, yes. torpedoes, electronic warfare systems, Correct. AVAC systems, yes. guns, tanks, and aircrafts. Absolutely. So these are all the things. So the entire range is uh, self-contained. Self this is one of the uh, biggest successes, Akash. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, so uh, Akash is a big success. It is there with both Army and Air Force. Yes. And the new generation Akash is also <clears throat> uh, being developed now. And That's that also right. will be going into the armed forces. Mm -hmm. And the SAMs, actually, varieties of SAMs have been developed. You know, the quick reaction surface-to-air missile. Yes. Then medium-range surface-to-air missile right. uh, is also developed. So, there are uh, series of uh, uh, surface-to-air missiles which have been That's developed. That's done, yeah. Even BrahMos has been, uh, you know, there have been varieties and you're also testing it with Air Force, you're testing it with the Army. Uh, what is that? Uh, that Python, uh, there was one more test that you had done with Tejas, I think. Uh, BrahMos basically, <clears throat> uh, it has gone into all the three services. Right. Army, Air Force and Navy. The Air version of the BrahMos also has been successfully tested. Sure. And uh, so Navy has been uh, using it and against ships, against land targets and right. all that. And we are also actually working on enhancing the range also. And so BrahMos is one of the very successful ventures what we had. And rather that is the first international cooperation uh, joint venture, joint venture Russia, which has yeah. been done. Mm -hmm. And uh, a supersonic cruise missile. Right. And as far as the LCA is concerned, we are trying number of weapons on the LCA. A lot of uh, weapons which are already existing with the Air Force. And uh, the weapons which have we have, like Astra, air to air missile, yeah. and uh, some of the like smart anti air field weapon, uh, guided bomb, these are all the things which we are trying on LCA. Uh, that is a continuous process which Naturally. is going on, uh, one, one by one weapon, you integrate it and test it and all that. That's going on well, and HL has been uh, uh, fully geared up, and uh, they should be starting the production. Uh, as early as possible and try to produce the the numbers, 83 numbers order which have government which has, has been given. placed, yes. But the next step in the aircraft uh, development would be perhaps uh, Tejas Mark II or Amka? Uh, we have both the Tejas Mark II which is going on uh, well. It's a, a bigger vehicle uh, compared to Mark I. Mark I is a lighter one right. and this is higher weight uh, class mm -hmm. LCA Mark II. The work of the LCA Mark II is going on well. And then uh, the advanced medium combat aircraft which is the 5.5 generation aircraft. The work of it is also going on and the design phase uh, has been already sanctioned by the government. The work is going on very seriously. The scientists are working on the core technologies uh -huh. uh, which are required uh, for this type of a fifth generation aircraft. Right. Those technologies are being developed by the uh, scientists mm -hmm. in a big way now. I see. What about the engine? Because that has always been an issue. So what are we looking at as far as engines are concerned? See, basically one thing is that the GTRE, the laboratory which is there in Bangalore, which has been working on the engines, which has developed actually the Kaveri engine for Tejas. But as the engine was evolving, the aircraft they was also, also evolved. Yes. <laughs> and so when, they, mm -hmm. when the engine got it developed, it There's fell a mismatch. short of there mm -hmm. was a mismatch. Mm -hmm. And so but then the Kaveri dry engine we are trying to use in our other applications, which is as a 47 kilonewtons engine. Right. Then uh, the offshoot of it is a smaller engine, 4.5 kilonewtons engine. Mm -hmm. We are trying to use it in Nirbhai, which right. uh, we should be going for a flight trial very soon on uh, Nirbhai. Okay. So, varieties of engines are being developed. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the engine what is required for AMCO is a higher class engine, about right. uh, uh, higher power. And so, there we are trying to look for uh, international tie-up mm -hmm. with engine houses. Uh, outside Various the engine houses, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, try to work with them to make this next class of engine. Right. You know, uh, we've, we've spoken about a year ago about uh, transfer of technology to industry and you know how so many technologies have been transferred. Now, uh, have you taken an audit about uh, after transfer of technology, how many of them have been able to productionize it and uh, satisfy the armed forces in a way? Because your job mainly is to uh, develop technology and then transfer it. 
how is the cooperation between the industry and the DRDO and the armed forces, so the three-way cooperation, how is it working? Uh-huh. I say that it is uh, going on reasonably well, mm-hmm. uh, firstly. Uh, most of the people who have taken the technology transfer are able to produce and supply. Some of them for the civilian application also. That, of course, they are in a full swing going on. Right. Coming to the armed forces, whatever the technology is, what we are offering to the industry is the one which has the potential to get deployed in the armed forces. Mm. So, uh, most of the things, uh, leaving aside the process time, what is required in placing the orders and all that, so those systems also what we have uh, transferred to the industry are also getting inducted into armed forces. It only depends a couple of times we may have to give uh, technology transfer to more than one industry. Sure. Then uh, when the process of selection and the quantities are limited or uh, something like that, maybe one industry gets the production order. This is uh, one thing. Now uh, we have also uh, started uh, transferring the critical technologies to private industries also. Mm-hmm. Like uh, earlier missiles and bombs, we were only going to uh, DPSUs. Now we started offering it to the private industries. Sure. So we have already mm, started giving the missiles technology mm-hmm. and even the guided bombs technology to the private, private industries. Sector, yeah. So the private sector is also getting uh, mm, a lot into the private uh, into these instead of a subsystem or a system manufacturer. The overall so actually, platform, the platform doing, yeah. they are able to come into the uh, yeah. thing. And uh, we have brought in a new scheme called DCPP, uh-huh. Development Come Production Partner. I see. See, the previously what we used to do is uh, we um, develop the project, yes. you develop it and you do the development right. trials and then you do the user trials. Right. And that time you transfer the technology to, to the, the production industry. industry. Now what we are doing is right yeah. at the beginning of the development, we are involving the industry mm-hmm. so that they gain the knowledge. Sure. And uh, then automatic th- technology transfer happens. Yeah, yeah. And even the first of uh, the, even the prototype onwards, the mm-hmm. models which come are from the industry. Right. So we are trying to reduce the number of trials also required. In fact, in the new uh, defense acquisition procedure, we have brought in a scheme where there will be a single uh, integrated uh, trial. Right. Wherein users, the production agency, designers, the quality assurance agency. Everyone will be together. Everyone will be together. And uh, there will be a PMT, which will be there. A project the project management team. team. And who will actually, uh, will be continuously there looking into everything and take decisions also immediately. Right. So this is uh, an integrated approach has been brought in here which actually reduces the timelines of induction. Exactly. You are also looking at uh, one or two final questions. Uh, drones and anti-drone systems. I, I heard you saying somewhere that, you know, we are ready with the uh, anti-drone systems and the drones, of course, are there. Just tell us a little more about that. Um, we have been working on the anti-drone technology. And uh, in fact, uh, last year, 2020, Republic Day, mm. and then Independence Day, and 2021, Republic Day, we have actually... Uh, deployed our system in uh, New Delhi. Right. And uh, we have also demonstrated to the users. Mm-hmm. And now, uh, particularly about 10 days back after the incident here, uh, we have actually integrated all these things on a vehicle. And in Kola near Bangalore, we have uh, actually demonstrated the capabilities to all the armed forces and security agencies. I see. Basically, it has a radar, Mm -hmm. which actually tracks them. Sure. And then there is an electro-optical system also, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. actually also actually tracks these uh, targets. And then there is a soft kill. uh, And a hard kill option. Hard kill also. Mm -hmm. Both are there. This is an integrated system, which Mm -hmm. has been uh, developed by DRDO. Technology has already been given to Bharat Electronics Limited. Mm -hmm. And we are also giving the technology to uh, industries. In fact, uh, the TOT agreements have been signed and people are actually geared up to take the technology now. The LNT, the Tata and Bharat Forge right. have already uh, mm-hmm. come into uh, picture. Adani, sorry, Adani, not Adani, yes. Adani. Yes. Right. Uh, Bharat Forge. Hmm. Uh, they have also come in and uh, they are uh, taking the technology. Okay. And a lot more also showing their interest. So you also issued some uh, expression of interest recently. Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah, based on that only these people have come forward. Right. And we have already signed the LATOT agreement with them. Hmm. And uh, I think they should be able to produce in large numbers. And, and that requirement them. will be high uh, going forward. Absolutely. That is Absolutely. how. One final question. You've just recently launched, uh, I saw or read, uh, MTech program for uh, through DRDO. What, what, how does that work? Oh, this is an important uh, thing, wherein actually um, the skill set to be developed in the defense technologies in the country. Mm-hmm. First, we started in uh, Gujarat, Gujarat mm-hmm. University, 
some courses there mm-hmm. and also uh, iit ram there in uh, gandhinagar mm. uh, last year after that last one year we been working with uh, aicte to bring in the courses in both mtech and btech program right uh, out of the pandemic it got delayed mm-hmm. now this year aicte and we announced the mtech program where in fact retired drdo scientists mm-hmm. will be even uh, teaching faculty. Faculty. Okay. faculty and in fact the syllabus has been worked out by them so various subjects have been worked out for the mtech program and lots of colleges have shown interest and they are all taking up this program mtech mm-hmm. program in even btech we will be having some electives also in this subject so this mtech program uh, even if about 30 40 colleges uh, in universities in the country come up and so you will have a uh, ready made pipeline <laughs> pipeline with uh, mm. skill set available with this that's right so i am very thankful to ministry of higher education and aict for uh, uh, cooperating and then taking up this uh, mtech program forward in defense technologies which will be very useful so clearly drdo has a uh, plate full and the entire spectrum that you are working from uh, mitigating the pandemic uh, covid 19 and to right up to the highest technology or most critical technology like missiles i think uh, your work is cut out but uh, wonderful work has been happening in drdo we must thank you for uh, the leading the team and uh, wish you good luck uh, in future endeavors thank you very much it's the guidance from uh, the leadership of the country and then the dedicated hard work of the scientists which has uh, actually making and we need to do a lot more absolutely to make ourselves uh, self sufficient in absolutely. defense i think absolutely thank you very much for your time thank you thank you